Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to look at Dynamo and creating scope boxes from a link. Uh, we're not going to just copy over scope boxes, but we're going to monitor that link for scope box changes. Now, not the dimensions of the scope box, which is something we could monitor, uh, but for this instance, we're only going to be monitoring if scope boxes have been added to Arch or subtracted from the, from Arch. And, and uh, we have a, a variety of kind of if statements that will figure out that environment of the Arch model. And so before I go into that, what I want to show you is the Revit model and kind of what we're working with. So I've got an MEP model here and what we're going to bring in is the scope boxes from the Arch model. So there is an Arch model linked and it has five scope boxes. The way, uh, so Dynamo can pull in those pretty easily. We could just have a, an easy node that'll just copy over those scope boxes. But we also want to create dependent views. For this example, we're only going to focus on level 01 MEP. And then, um, and, and then for it to track the changes between Arch and if a scope box has been added or removed from it, we have a project parameter which is going to be used to kind of track uh, those changes, which we'll, we'll look at briefly inside of Dynamo. This scope boxes MEP node is, it's not, it's not used in this workflow. What I use instead is the, uh, the scope box name, but the reason why you may want to have a scope boxes MEP is if you're tracking the GUID from there, then you can map the two GUIDs and then if anything happens with the list structure at any point you could easily map uh, the appropriate scope box to the appropriate one in the link and figure out exactly which one has been removed or if there's been a new one added so that would be it, it primarily it would it, it would be used mostly when you're deleting stuff so if you delete something from arch so if you delete a scope box from arch and you need to delete a scope box then in MEP sometimes because of the list and where at that scope box has been removed or which scope box it could accidentally delete the wrong thing wrong scope box in the MEP model so again if you track the GUIDs in both you can map those and make sure that they're always in line with one another and you can know exactly uh, what elements go to what or what elements in the MEP model so what scope box elements match in the arch model so I'm going to close this and what we're going to do is bring uh, Dynamo back over there's a bunch of if statements in here and really uh, for this first time run we're only gonna uh, run this bit right here because what this looks at is the length of that parameter, that scope box's arch parameter, and it sees if, if, if it's zero, that tells us that, hey, scope boxes have never been created for this project. And so what it does is it passes through the elements, the list of elements into this, which creates the scope boxes, and then this, which creates the uh, dependent views. And so we'll go ahead and run it, and then you'll notice a variety of errors kind of happening all over the place and that's because again this if statement because it passes the list of elements that goes through here and, and does what it needs to but down here that causes this uh, because it got that as an input it's, it tells us that hey SB not created meaning scope boxes have not been created before this this run so it passes that string into the rest of this which errors out everything else now if this passed SB created telling us that scope boxes were created then it'll pass through this if statement which then will pass uh, the list of elements which then will go through a variety of uh, if statements over here to figure out if there's been elements added to the arch model or a scope box added to the arch model or a scope box removed from the arch model and then from there it'll tell us what we need to do uh, to either create or delete a scope box in the MEP model. So we primarily ran this part, which just creates a scope box and then it creates a dependent view. And it does all the way over here at the end, it does write and update that scope box arch parameter. And so if I drag this over, we can look at those things. So we've got our scope boxes now in the model, all five of them. We have a all our dependent views. We have, uh, if we go into the, oops, the project information 
dialog box, we can see the scope box's arch has been updated with the uh, information, which is the GUID and the scope box. The reason why I use the GUID is because that's unique and it, oh, it stays unique um, always. So if they change anything, the name, it, it's always the same thing. Um, so it's a great way to, to make sure we're always mapped to that. And uh, this is what we're going to use to tell us if something's been removed from Arch or if something's been added to Arch, uh, something being the scope boxes. So if we bring, um, bring it back over, what we're going to look at next is if we delete or uh, if we add a scope box, which we're going to do a little workaround just to show you kind of um, this method. So I'll show you uh, when we get back into Revit what we're going to do uh, to do that. So instead of going up here, what it's going to do is error out. It's going to go down here and then it's going to get passed through these uh, right here, which checks the count of the value. Well, all this does here is it tells us, hey, has something been added to that list or has, has something, been, something been removed from that list? Uh, of scope boxes in the arch model has some has the scope box been added to the arch model or removed from the arch model and if so I'm either going to delete one in the MEP model or I'm going to go through and create the scope box in dependent view the new scope box in dependent view for the uh, um, MEP model so what I'm going to do is just close this real quick and then I'm going to reopen that script drag that over here and then what we're gonna do is just uh, kinda create a situation as if we did create a new scope box in Arch so I'm gonna delete this scope box one I'm gonna delete the dependent view I'm gonna go into project information I'm gonna come down here I'm going to delete the GUID and the scope box one. I'm going to press OK. And now what it's pretty much like is is if we have never had scope box one, and Arch is now just updated their model with scope box one. We're going to uh, reload their or it's as if we reloaded their link and we now have scope box one. We're going to rerun that Dynamo script to bring in that scope box and then create the dependent view. So instead of going this route it's going to go down here and kind of pass through uh, some other if statements so if we run it you can see this errored out because what it does is it passes through this SB created which does nothing for this node but it does do something for this if statement it causes it to uh, send through the elements which then get passed through uh, here and down here all this is doing is in case we're deleting an element, which in this case we're not deleting an element, but uh, what we want to do is kind of count and figure out if we, if we are, at, if a scope box has been removed or added to the arch model. And in this case, the scope, a scope box has been added to the arch model. So if we scroll over here, you can see true. You can see false. So true being, uh, that an arch model has been added or in the arch model a scope box has been added to it and so what it does is it passes through that true which then passes through a filtered list which gets us that linked uh, scope box so that we can pass that through to copy scope boxes from link and then create scope boxes for every added view and it goes through and it updates the scope boxes uh, arch parameter again. So if I drag this over, we can look and see that we do have scope box one. We do have that over here uh, in the dependent views. And then if we go to project information, scroll down, we can see that this has has been updated. So now the other the other thing that could happen is they could uh, remove a scope box. So I've already removed one from the arch model. I just need to reload it. So if we jump over to manage and then arch, we can do a reload. And 
And now just to make sure if we move that scope box forward, we can see that uh, in the arch model, it's not there anymore. So move that back. And if we jump back into Dynamo, what's gonna happen is in this case, we're just deleting the scope box. And that's gonna tell folks, hey, this has been removed from arch. Uh, this may not be a workflow that is uh, is very good for you if it deletes the scope box uh, because you may be you know your model may be different depending on the way that it was broken up. MEP might be broken up differently than than Arch, and in that case, this workflow wouldn't work very well. But you can just remove that delete element node, and then it's fine. Now it doesn't delete the scope boxes uh, or the dependent view because the dependent view uh, could be something pretty bad if you if you delete that uh, but it's definitely something you can add to the workflow if you needed to so if we drag this back over what it's going to do now is it's going to run through this it's going to go through here instead of this top one being true this is going to be true which is just going to pass through this if statement which is uh, going to pass through the uh, element that needs to be deleted. The way that the element gets uh, figured out is it uses the name value. If you remember in that parameter, it had the name values. It uses that and, and to figure out uh, it, um, the name of the arch model and compares it to the name of the scope boxes in our model to figure out the differences. And that's kind of how we organize the list and then figure out uh, and filter filter out the, the element that we need uh, to be passed through here, which is the scope box that needs to be deleted. Uh, so definitely take a look at all of this. Uh, and pretty much everything you see here, uh, kind of look at the flow of information. I think that would be helpful for your understanding and even leveraging this in your own way on your own scripts. Definitely check this out. Uh, we will look at it in a second after this runs, but First, I'll, I'll drag this over here. We'll just make sure this there is no scope box. This is going to be deleted, uh, and we will still have the scope box um, scope box four dependent view there. So I'm going to run it, and then you can see it removed it. It didn't touch this. And if we jump over to the project information. You can see here it did remove that value from uh, from the parameter, so it isn't isn't tracking a scope box uh, four anymore. So you can see here this errored out, this errored out because it didn't have any elements to pass through, and since uh, this wasn't true, and this was, it it causes this if statement to pass through an element which the element is being pulled from this filtered list and you can kinda get an idea if, we, if I drop down all these of what's going on so this is the scope boxes from the active model so we've got five scope boxes and you can kinda see the order of them is different from the order of, of the scope boxes inside of the element parameter or sorry the scope boxes from the link so you can see the list is different and we can't just directly compare the two lists and then remove an item based off of that so instead I do this uh, cross lacing and then messing with levels a little bit I have uh, each of these compared to um, or each of these uh, scope boxes, so scope box, uh, scope box two is compared to the all four items in this list, and you can see it's true here, and it goes through each of these items in uh, scope box four, which is the one we removed uh, from the arch model. You can see that here. If we scroll down to list two, it's false for all of them, meaning that that scope box does not exist anymore inside of the arch link. So. I use this this list all false, which will tell me uh, pretty much tell me which one of those those scope boxes are not existing in this uh, arch model anymore. Which you can see here is reading true because it's all false in that list, and then that will give me a nice uh, kind of a, a boolean uh, list that I can use in the filter by bool mask node, 
which all I'm passing into that is the list of elements of the scope boxes. And then that gets passed up here, and if this happens to pass in a true value, uh, then it'll pass through the element, which gets deleted here. And then at the end, it does this every single time. It'll update with the latest uh, information from uh, with the scope boxes. So that's kind of it. Uh, hopefully, it kind of gave you a good idea how this script works. Uh, hopefully, you learned something. Uh, please uh, take this script, use it in any way that you you want. Um, it does use four different packages, which I didn't mention. But if I show you that real quick and extensions so you can see uh there's been been morph nodes rhythm archilab reanimation uh you know if you can recreate those uh packages you can leverage uh, leverage this script or recreate this script without packages that is way better uh you won't have issues with packages like you you generally run into uh so uh, let me know if that is something that you do, but those are the packages that I use. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, if you have any troubles using this script. I can't share this these Revit sample models, but I can share the script. You can have that and use it in any way that you want. Um, but as for the models, I can't, but definitely reach out if you have any troubles with the uh, the script. But thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.